Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Flinch Squad Circuit Review Show. I hope you're all well, having a great day and looking forward to getting to the matches. Today we are going into week 9 this episode and all the matches that we've got lined up for you this week are going to be absolutely amazing. I cannot wait to get into it but talking about previous weeks, if you've missed any of the past week matches and would like to catch up, see the progress of the players and how they've got on up to now, you can go up here I'll link a card for you and you can check out all the actions so far but getting on to today's episode like I say we're going into week nine and one of the things that we've got to bear in mind is we've got two weeks left in the ultra series so what we're doing this week is playing catch up we're going to cover week nine week 10 week 11 just to catch up and we'll feature one match from each of those match weeks but they're going to be incredible matches to feature on this episode so I cannot wait to get into it but before we do I just need to mention talking about the ultra series we are two weeks away from that and to let you know that the ultra series signups for the flinch squad circuit have now opened so if you guys out there if there's any of you guys watching the progress of this week by week and thinking ah, I'd like to take part in this this looks a lot of fun well this is your opportunity you can go down the link in the description below hop over to the patreon it has a full article on what the ultra series is going to be like structure wise how it's going to operate week by week and you can see how you can sign up and get involved over there so if you've got any questions about that do leave them in the comment section below I'll be happy to answer any questions you do have about it but it's going to be extremely fun going into the ultra series again we're going to have a lot of great prizes in the ultra series up for grabs like we have in the moon series trophies custom made flinch squad esports jerseys for the top four as well as a flurry of other prizes and of course there is those flinch squad points up for grabs to get an invite to the flinch squad invitational at the end of the season which will be a live stream event a knockout event and there will be some absolutely incredible prizes up for grabs for you players that are involved with it at the end of the season so it's going to be a lot of fun like i say if you'd like to get involved in the last segment of the flinch squad circuit then go down in the description hop over to the patreon and check out how you can do that so getting into this week's episode, we are kicking off with week 9's matches. We're going to feature the match between Pinko and Will going into this first one. So without further ado, let's get straight into it guys. So you can see that Pinko is on the bottom of your screen. You've got Will on the top of your screen. Will leading off with Lunala, Tapukoko and Pinko leading off with Tornadus and Xernia. So we're seeing the electric terrain activate from this Tapu Koko as we go into turn one. We are going to see a taunt come straight out from the tornadoes, prevent that Lunala doing anything as an electro web comes out from the Tapu Koko, doing big damage and picking up the knockout onto that tornadoes, doing some nice damage to the Xerneas and reducing its speed by one. We are now seeing the Xerneas go for that Geomancy. It is going to proc the power herb and get that one turn boost across special attack, special defense, and speed. So we can't see a tailwind from the Lunala because it's the Denied from that taunt as we go into turn two. Dazzling Gleam gonna come out, take down that Tapu Koko and break the Shadow Shield on that Lunala and followed up by a knockoff on that Cortana taking down that Lunala giving Pinko a huge advantage going into this early stage of the game. We're going to see Toxic Croak and Xerneas come out for Will now, the top of your screen. We're going to see just a protect from the Xerneas on Pinko's side as a fake out comes out into the cart on. A nice play here from Will as he does match that Geomancy now. He is going to boost up with that Power Herb one turn boost with the special attack, special defense and speed and match. Go toe to toe with Pinko's Xerneas. So we are going to see the next turn play out. We're going to see a helping hand though from this Toxic Croak support and this Xerneas going to throw out a moon blast is it enough to get the cartana it is enough to take down the cartana and tying up this game as the dazzling gleam comes out procking that focus sash on the toxic croc as the kyoga comes out now for pinko bringing the rain with it and really the toxic croc's not in a bad position we're going to see another helping hand though supporting that xerneas on will side of the field as he throws out another moon blast it is enough to pick up the knockout onto the xerneas as we see a scald from the kyoga into the xerneas picking up the burn there which is quite big the dry skin coming into effect for the Toxic Croak, going to heal some of that health back as we see the electric terrain now disappear and will take game one. So we will go straight into game two here, and again, 
Will is going to lead off with that Tapu Koko and the Lunala here as we see Incineroar and Xerneas come out for Pinko on the bottom of your screen. Electric Train going to activate once again the Intimidate coming out from the Incineroar. Tapu Koko going to retreat and Xerneas hit the fill for Will and activate that Fairy Aura ability. And Pinko, Xerneas just going straight for that Geomancy getting that boost when it can. As we see it proc the Power Herb and get the boost across Special Attack, Special Defense and Speed plus 2 across the board there as Lunala on Will's side goes for that Tailwind just to keep the speed control advantage here going as a roll comes out from the Incineroar and removes the Lunala from the field. We're going to see a Volt Switch from the Tapu Koko now into that Incineroar and do some nice heavy damage there as a Dazzling Gleam comes out from Pinkos. Xerneas is going to take that Toxic Rock down to its Sash and the Moon Blast now come out from the opposing Xerneas on Will's side of the field into the Incineroar. Not quite enough to take the knockout and proc that Figgy Berry as we see another roll from this Incineroar. Remove that Xerneas from the field as Tapu Koko is dragged on here. There's, so we're going to see a Protect from the Xerneas and the fake out into that slot. Electro web coming out from the Tapu Koko. We're going to do some really nice damage to this Incineroar. Going to see the Snarl come out from Incineroar here. It does pick up the knockout onto the Toxic Rock as Xerneas makes its way back onto the field now for Will. We're going to see the Tapu Koko and the Xerneas not in the best of positions here for Will, but you've got to remember that Tailwind is still up as an Electro Web comes out and is followed up by a Dazzling Gleam from the Xerneas on Pinko's side of the field. Going to be enough to pick up the knockout on both Will's Tapu Koko and the Xerneas and leaves Lunala to come in all by itself and Pinko tying this one up going into a Game 3. So we will go into this game three now and we're going to see Will lead off this time with the Xerneas and Moongus changing things up here as the Tornadus comes back out for Pinko with that Xerneas. He's got the really nice check Pinko here with the Tornadus as it goes for the taunt into that Moongus just shutting it down. So you see another Geomancy come out from Pinko Xerneas straight away every turn just going for that Geomancy, proccing that Power Herb and getting these boosts across the board here as we see the Geomancy just followed up from Will Xerneas now and matching suit with it but is this Amoongus on Will's side of the field going to go for a clear smog into the Xerneas on Pinko's side of the field that's the big question here and no we just see a spore from the Amoongus we're going to see a protect now from the Xerneas as we see a tailwind set up from the Tornadus just doubling the speed there on that side of the field as a Moonblast comes into that slot and picks up a quick knockout clear smog coming in now into the Xerneas slot but we are going to see Cortana hit the field once again for Pinko like in game one Xerneas now going to protect here as the Moonblast comes out into the, the Amoongus is it going to be enough followed up with a smart strike into this slot can it be it can take it down remove the Amoongus and that is a big turn for Pinko making some big ground here after losing the Tornadus to that Moonblast the previous turn Lunala now coming in throwing out a Y God going to try and potentially protect against a Y God which is what comes out from Pinko's Xerneas as we see a knockoff into the Lunala do some nice damage and a dazzling gleam returning from Will's Xerneas not enough to pick up the KR on either of these targets he's just seen a protect here on Xerneas on Will's side as a Moonblast comes into that Lunala picking up the knockout there and taking that down with a Smart Strike coming into the Xerneas on Will's side but into the Protect there. Tapu Koko now coming out onto the field for Will. It's his last ditch attempt as we see the Dazzling Gleam come out from the Xerneas. It's going to be enough to take that Tapu Koko straight down. Dazzling Gleam going to come out from Will Xerneas and pick up the knockout onto the Cortana, onto the Xerneas and put himself right back into this match after it seemed hopeless. We're going to see the Kyogre now come out for Pinko as we see a Moonblast come out and take it. Oh, that's huge damage with a Waterium Z now firing off from Pinko's Kyogre. Is it going to be enough to pick up the knockout? But we're seeing a Z Psycho. Oh my gosh, what a play from Pinko. And we see a Moonblast come out, a Kyogre with the Z Psycho restoring all of its health, getting all of those boosts as well. Putting Pinko right back in the match. This man is a legend. It's so crazy. And he is going to actually pick up the win here. Massive props to Prinko. Ha, oh, commiserations to Will, but you just think in that position that Will has the match sealed. The Z Psycho, what a play from Pinko. And what an incredible match for us to kick off with today. So we will head straight into our next match, which will be between Hectic and Stu. And this is from week 10. So this is the feature match from week 10. We are going through week 9, week 10, and 11 in this episode. Gonna see Stu on the top of your screen with the Kyogre and Ludicolo, and Hectic on the bottom of your screen with the Park and Kyogre so pressure activating on that Palkia just showing some speed tears here as a Serena switches straight in we are going to see a Grass Knot straight into that Palkia do some nice damage there with the Thunder 
doubling up into this palkia and not quite enough but picking up the paralysis as a substitute is tried but denied because of the damage there Ludicolo we're going to switch straight out hot or now going to hit the field for Stu as it is repositioning and another Thunder going to come in and easily pick up the knockout here onto the Palkia. Remove that from the players. We see a U-turn from the Serena. No power whip this turn into the Kyogre just to reposition itself and bring the Tapu Koko onto the field. Going to summon that electric terrain with it and stop putting on a lot of pressure on both things on Stu's side of the field. Going to see the whole retreat as the Ludicolo comes back in but you've got to fear this scarfed Kyogre here. It is going to be powered up in the electric terrain with the Thunder picking up a big critical hit on the Kyogre on Hectic side of the field and picking up the knockout here just left with that Serena and the Coco and it's a quick forfeit here. Stu taking game one pretty quickly here and we'll go straight into game two. So getting into game two here you're going to see Hectic lead off with the Palkia and the Serena on top of your screen now and Stu on the bottom of your screen with the Ludicolo and the Raichu here. So Ludicolo going to switch out turn one. Ferrothorn going to hit the field as so we see a protect from this Palkia just dodging any nuzzle from this Raichu as that's what comes out and a U-turn coming out from the Serena going to break a potential sash on that Raichu and just allow Hectic to reposition himself as the Incineroar now hits the field for him. I think one thing Hectic has to do is really preserve this Palkia. It does so well against the Kyogre which did so much work in game one we are going to see a substitute from that Palkia as a Faker goes into the Raichu and prevents it from moving just a protect now coming out from the Palkia on Hectic side as we see a protect from this Ferrothorn from fear of that Flare Blitz from the Incineroar we're going to see the Raichu now Volt switch out on that Incineroar slot as Ludicolo hits the field and the U-turn coming out into that Ludi doing some really nice damage for Hectic and the Incineroar coming back out the Serena coming in for Hectic so we're going to see the Ludicolo switch out the hot or now hit the field for Stu as that pressure ability activates and a special rent spatial rent coming out into that hot or doing some nice damage as well but behind that protection of the substitute the Palkia is not really worried too much about this Ferrothorn as the Serena now goes for the U-turn and the Incineroar cycling back in with that intimidate Hectic really making the most out of these turns here as we see a power whip into that Palkia does go into the substitute and the substitute does fade here so Ferrothorn switching out right you're going to hit the field once again for Hectic as we see a Waterium Z now fired off from this Palkia and you've got to think it is going to be into that hot or to remove it from the equation on Stu's side of the field we do see it should it and it does take it down that is a huge turn there for Hectic taking full advantage of this board position here Flare Blitz into the Raichu picking up the knockout there and leaving Stu now with two Pokemon left on on his side of the field and nothing really to deal with that Palkia as long as this Incineroar is sticking around. We're going to see the Serena switch straight in. Spatial Ren from the Palkia into the Ludicolo. Knock out that Ren to boost its speed stat in this turn. The Power Whip comes out after the knockout into the Palkia but not quite enough and we see the forfeit and Hectic tied this one up so we will go straight into a game three. As you see, Hectic lead off again with that Palkia and Serena that worked so well for him in game two. And Stu revert back to that Kyogre Ludicolo, bringing the rain with him and making the most of that lead that worked so well in game one. Protect coming straight out from the Palkia. Ice Beam this turn into the Serena, doing some nice damage there. Ice Beam from the Kyogre. Is it enough to pick up? It is enough to pick up the knockout on the Serena, taking a big advantage and big turn here from Stu. I'm going to see the Incineroar now come in. It is going to pressure with the fake out, but it still has the fear potential water type attack. So we're actually seeing the Kyogre and the Ludi switch out. The Raichu coming back onto the field with the Ferrothorn for Stu. As we see the fake out into that Ferrothorn slot and the substitute come out from the Palkia. I'm going to see the Palkia now protect from any potential moves from this Raichu as we see a fake out into the Incineroar slot and a Leech Seed come out from the Ferrothorn into the Incineroar just getting some health back and just whittling away that Incineroar turn by turn with these Leech Seeds. We're going to see the Ferrothorn now protect from the threat of that Incineroar Volt Switch coming out from the Raichu. Going to reposition himself and get the Kyogre back onto the field now and the Spatial Rend from the Palkia into this Kyogre are going to do some really nice damage there as we see the Incineroar go for a U-turn into that slot as well. Further damaging that Kyogre and reducing any potential water spots coming out from that Pokemon. Kyogre now hitting the field for Hectic as we see a Scald into that Kyogre slot. Thunder coming out from the opposing Kyogre on Hectic side. Going to pick up the knockout on Stu's Kyogre as we do see a Spatial Rend from this Palkia into the Ferrothorn. Going to do some decent damage even though that is a resisted hit. It is a critical hit. That is why. And a Power Whip coming out into the Kyogre picking 
picking up the knockout there. So things getting really tight here going into these last few turns as you see Raichu and Incineroar come out for Hectic. Raichu on Stu's side of the field, the Intimidate going to cycle onto the Ferrothorn and the Raichu. The Palkia going to protect this turn, not wanting to take any unnecessary damages. We just see a fake out into the Incineroar and then that Leech Seed play again into that slot. Just sapping away any health and making sure this Ferrothorn is as healthy as possible. Going to see the Ferrothorn switch out now. The Ludicolo going to hit the field as we see a Volt switch into that Palkia slot. Going to break the sub there and potentially get the Ferrothorn back in on Stu's side of the field. Do we see a Flare Blitz into that slot though? And Hectic read this as Spatial Rend into that slot and just a u-turn this turn i want to take any unnecessary risks here as we see the incineral just go into that ferrothorn proc the iron barbs proc its figgy berry but it's still got that leech seed to worry about going into these last few turns and we're gonna see the hydro vortex now come out from the palkia which slot is it going to be into you've got to imagine it's probably going to be into that ferrothorn yet yeah, trying to get rid of it before it can do too much damage but this ludicolo going to threaten this incineral as well as we see another hydro vortex And firing off into the Incineroar, and it's going to pick up a huge knockout onto the Incineroar, paving the way for this Ferrothorn to close out this match. We're going to see a power whip into the Palkia, and it doesn't look like Hectic's got too much left in the tank to deal with this Ferrothorn as we see another spatial render. Grass Knot now from the Ludicolo going to be enough, and Stu picking up this match in game week 10. What a game for us to feature in this episode. What a great set between these two. So we're going to jump straight into our third game today and this is from game week 11 and we will be featuring purple versus pinko so we will get into this pinko on the top of your screen gonna lead out with the heliolisk and the tapu finny and Purple going to lead out with the Kyogre and the Tapu Koko here. The Electric Terrain going to hit the field. Misty Terrain overwrite that with the Tapu Fini. Going to see the Drizzle activate on this Kyogre after the Misty Terrain. So, indicating that this is a really slow Kyogre. We're going to see the Kyogre switch straight out for Incineroar as we do see the Volt Switch from the Tapu Koko into the Tapu Fini. Do some decent damage here as the Tapu Koko retreats back and the Dustman, the Crossman hit the field for Purple. Going to see a Volt Switch come straight out from the Heliolisk and go back, reposition and Zygarde now hit the field. Pinko has brought the snake this episode. So, going to see the swagger onto that as well. Going to boost that attack by two stages and protect it by the Misty Terrain. The Dustman and Crossman is going to feel very threatened right now as Sogaleo switches in for the Tapu Fini and the fake out into the Zygarde as a Trick Room is set up from the Duskman and Crossman. We do see a knockoff from the Incineroar into the Sogaleo. A coil coming out from this Zygarde, which is slower than the Dustman and the Crossman, which is very interesting. But Maybe not slow because the Trick Room is set again here as we do see Trick Room, Trick Room set and reset going into this next turn. Flare Blitz going to come out from the Incineroar into that Sogaleo. Not going to be quite enough to pick up the knockout as a Photon Geyser coming out from the Duskman into the Zygarde. Not really doing too much damage as a Superpower comes out, picks up the knockout onto the Incineroar. And some nice damage there and getting some leeway in this match as a Thousand Arrows comes out from the Zygarde. Going to do some big damage to this Duskman Necrozma and proccing a weakness policy going into this next turn. Kyogre now going to hit the field for purple. As we see Pinko readjust, bring that Heliolisk in. You've got to imagine it is going to be Dry skin as a photon guys are now coming out from this Dustman Necrozma plus two. Not quite enough to pick up the knockout. We are seeing that dry skin revealed, but this is going to be enough to take down the Zygarde. Dustman Necrozma is ridiculously strong as the rain does end here. We are going to see the type of Finny once again hit the field for Pinko. That misty terrain setting up, but the Zygarde going down and that Sogaleo not in the best of positions here. You've got to stall out these trick room turns if you can. Photon guys are into that slot and a thunder coming out into the type of Finny. Not quite enough to pick up the knockout there for Pinko's type of Finny as it does proc that wiki berry and an icy wind coming out will be enough to get the knockout onto the necrozma that is the big threat and now just this Kyogre left on the field but the Tapu Koko coming back in gonna create that electric train onto the field and uh, threaten the Tapu Fini and the Heliolisk feeling a little bit under pressure now but the Sogaleo are going to come in for its place. Kyogre on purple side going to protect as we see a light screen set up from this Tapu Fini and the light screen from the Tapu Koko so all the special defense are boosting all around here to so go into these next few turns as we see the Sogaleo switch out. Heliolisk going to come back onto the field. Volt switch into the Tapu Fini. Not quite enough to pick up the knockout as we see another icy wind from this Tapu Fini just reducing the speed 
stats on both of the Tapakoko and the Kyogre. As we do see a Waterium Z come out from the Tapakoko and from the Kyogre, and you've got to imagine it's into that Heliolisk, which it is. The Dry Skin not actually acting like anything. Eerie Impulse coming out, reducing the special attack on that Tapakoko by two stages, which is big, and another Icy Wind from this Tapu Fini coming out, paving the way and setting this really up for the Sogaleo to come in and clean up. And once this Tapu Fini goes down for Hectic, we see another Thunder and it is into that Heliolisk slot. But we are going to see a Grass Knot now into this Kyogre, going to start doing some damage as another Icy Wind comes out from the Tapu Fini. Both these Pokemon slow, slow, slow on purple side and not really much room to maneuver out of this. We're going to see the knockout now onto that Tapu Fini from the Tapu Coco as an Ice Beam comes out into the Heliolisk. Not doing so much damage, but the Sogaleo coming out onto the field now and in a really nice position to do some big damage. We are going to see a Voltage from this Heliolisk into the Kyogre and the Z-Move come out from the Sogaleo and we will have to cut this scene, but we'll see who it goes into. And it is into the Tapakoko behind the Protect. This leaves the Kyogre open to just throw out a Thunder. And is it going to be enough? It is not enough, but it does pick up the Paralysis onto the Sogaleo. We're going right down to the wire in this first game here. As we see the Healy, let's go for the Volt Switch now and pick up the Knockout onto the Kyogre. Can the Tapakoko deal with what's left on the field? We're going to see the Sogaleo get taken down by the Volt Switch from the Tapakoko. And has the Healy, let's It's got the Eerie Impulse. Going to reduce that Special Attack stat on the Tapakoko once again. Thunder coming out. Can it? be enough it's not enough to take down this heliolisk and a volt switch coming out from the heliolisk gonna take Tapakogo down at 10 hp volt switch back not enough to take down the heliolisk and the heliolisk showing that it is king of the electric types taking down this Tapakogo with a combination of eerie impulse for pink call taking game one what a set there and i cannot wait to get into game two so as we get into game two we are going to see pinko lead off with the tapu fini and the heliolisk and purple lead off with the incineroar dusk main necrozma the uh, misty terrain activate on the field as the intimidate comes out from the incineroar into both of these targets we're going to see a fake out straight away into that tapu fini and a volt switch from the heliolisk into that dust main necrozma and bring in that sogaleo get it set up onto the field flinch from the tapu fini from that fake out as the trick room gets set up from this dust main necrozma going into turn two just seeing a flare blitz without the rain this time into that Sogaleo doing some big damage here. As the Sunsteel Strike comes up following up from this Dustman Necrozma. You've got to think it's into that slot as well. But it's into the Tapu Fini doing some nice big damage. As the Heal Pulse comes out into this Sogaleo. Going to get all that health back from that. Flare Blitz as a Trick Room is reversed from the Sogaleo, putting the speed dimensions back in Pinko's favour. We're going to see the Zygod now hit the field for Pinko. Get that special... Misty Seed boost here as the superpower comes out from the Sogaleo into the Incineroar. Going to pick up the knockout there. And the Duskman and the Crossma goes for the Trick Room once again. So the dimensions turned and the slowest things on the field. Going to move first. Kyogre now hitting the field for purple under this rain, under this Trick Room. Feeling really good now as the Tapu Fini comes back in for the Sogaleo. We're going to see the Zygod just protect this turn. Just to try and stall out this rain, this Trick Room and see if it can create any momentum but an ice beam coming out doubling into that slot not going to hit but into the protectors the sun seal strike comes in this turn into the type of finny going to pick up the knockout can the zygod take a water spout single target it can take it pretty well as a coil comes out from the zygod now just trying to stall out these trick room turns but boosting its attack and its accuracy by one stage here as well as that defense sogale are going to hit the field once again zygod going to protect this turn as we see a photon geyser into that slot from the dustman across man an ice beam and leaving the Sogaleo unattended and getting a super power off into this Kyogre slot. You are going to be able to see the Sogaleo switch out now. Healy is going to hit the field once again. I think oh, we're going to see the Photon Geyser this turn into the Zygod. Going to do some nice damage in a double up with that Ice Beam into that slot. Take down the Zygod pretty easily and it goes down. But the dimensions turn back to normal as the Sogaleo comes back onto the field with this Healy Lisk. As we see a Volt Switch into that slot. And we are going to see the Z-Move come out once again from this Sogaleo. And where it is into the Kyogre. And it's not quite enough to pick up the knockout because if it's not very effective this and we are going to see the Kyogre return with a Hydro Vortex this time not going to be into that Heliolisk as it fires off into the Sogaleo under the rain you've got to imagine it's going to be enough and this means that Purple is probably going to tie this game back up as a Trick Room is set up from this Dustman Necrozma the rain does stop but too little too late I think as this Dustman Necrozma is going to be able to deal with this Heliolisk pretty easily activating a Focus Sash from that Photon Geyser with an Ice Beam following up and picking up the knockout so Purple tying up 
recap game two and we are going to finish up in this episode with a game three going into this last match so cannot wait let's get straight into it guys so Pinko once again on the top of your screen is going to be leading out with that Incineroar and Heliolisk doing some really good work in game one. Can he repeat that going into this third game to steal the set? Going to see a purple lead off with the Incineroar and the Dustman and Necrozma here as we see turn one play out with a fake out from the Incineroar on Pinko's side and a fake out from purple side. Just a dead turn here going into turn two. The Volt Switch coming out from this Heliolisk into the Incineroar. Going to switch out and bring that Zygarde in but no Misty Terrain right now as we do see a knockoff into that slot get rid of that misty seed as we see a roll come out from the incineral and trying to prevent that trick room as it does burn out and switch in for the serena i'm gonna see the serena switch straight out in the kyoga now hit the field as we see the zygote go for a call I'm gonna boost that attack that defense and the accuracy of it going into this next turn with a snarl coming out from the incineral we're gonna really help that zygote against this kyoga that's just hit the field we're gonna see a u-turn now come out from purple's incineral into the Incineroar on Pinko's side and pivot in that Dustman Necrozma. I'm going to see now the Incineroar switch out for the Misty Terrain and that Tapu Fini that comes onto the field now and just give that Zygod a little bit of protection as we see the Kyogre protect and another coil come out from this Zygod just to boost those defense, attack and accuracy even more. We're going to see a Photon Geyser and no Trick Room here come out from this Dustman Necrozma. We are going to see a light screen set up from the Tapu Fini now even further protecting this Zygod with another coil. Going to plus three in attack defense and accuracy as we see a thunder come out from this Kyogre into the type of Finny now not really going to be doing too much after that snarl and that light screen set up on Pinko's side of the field photon guys are coming out from the dusk main across my gonna take that zygote down to below 50 percent and the ice beam coming out but it is enough even behind the light screen after that snarl gonna be enough to pick up the knockout onto that zygote now incineral coming out for Pinko and purple in not a bad position now as the sun seal strike comes out from the dusk Dustman Necrozma, it is going to be into that Tapu Fini. Do some nice damage there as a Snarl comes out from the Incineroar just to further reduce the attack stat on that Kyogre and proc the weakness policy on the Dustman Necrozma. Not looking good for Pinko going to these latter turns as another Thunder comes out from this Kyogre and the Swagger coming out from the Fini into this Incineroar. Going to power it up going into this next turn as the rain does stop. Necrozma going to switch out because of the pressure here as we see the Intim Incineroar come back in with that Intimidate just put that Incineroar back down to plus one. I'm going to see a Flare Blitz into the Incineroar slot and do some nice damage there as the Kyogre going for this Hydro Vortex, the Waterium Z proccing on this Kyogre. No rain boosting here, it is on minus two, so it, but it should still be enough to get this Incineroar, but not quite enough. The Incineroar standing up to it very well as a Heal Pulse comes out from this Tapu Fini and power back up that HP bar on the Incineroar side. So the Kyogre now switching out. Dustman and Krozma are going to hit the field one once again, the type of Finny going out for Pinko and the Haleyless coming back in. Knock off now into the Incineroar on Pinko's side of the field as a roll comes out from the Incineroar on to Purple's Incineroar and the Serena come in as the light screen does fade. We are going to see a Volt Switch into that Serena slot from the Heliolisk as the Tapu Fini comes back onto the field for Pinko getting that Misty Terrain up once again and the Flare Blitz coming out from the Incineroar into that S Serena slot picking up the knockout there, taking it down and getting some leeway back in this game for Pinko. Photon guys are into the Tapu Fini. Going to pick up the knockout there as we do see the Heliolisk come back onto the field now with the Incineroar on Purple's side so gonna cycle that intimidate once more he's got access to this fake out now and does he go for the the trick room it might be an idea but as long as this incinero is on the field for pinko you kind of want to hold off doing that but it is getting lower and lower health as these turns tick by gonna see a vault switch now into the incinero proc the figgy berry on the purple side of the field actually i papa berry and the um, flare blitz into that dustman across we're gonna do some nice damage but the recoil really hurting here and the heliolisk going down to a photon guys are look Looks like purple is going to be able to clinch this one at the dying seconds of the game and take the set 2-1 from pinko and what a set for us to witness today 
And that rounds up all of the games for this week, but we've had some absolutely storming games going into this one, guys. I hope you have enjoyed the episode so far. It's been incredible. And what we're gonna do now is just take a quick look at the leaderboard going into the end of week 11. There are quite a few games to be played yet that we're missing results from, but we will catch up with them for next week and make sure that we've got a fully fledged table with one episode to follow after next week, revealing our winner of the moon series before going into the ultra series so you can see at the top of the table shade is running away with it then you've got Stu in second will in third pinko in fourth luigi in fifth hectic in sixth you've got crim in seventh purple in eighth Nigel in 9th, Amagi in 10th, you've got Yorine in 11th, Johnny in 12th, Alex in 13th, Pokemarty in 14th, Xenophis Ace in 15th and Bevum in 16th. So, what an incredible episode. I can't get my head around some of the matches that we've had today. They've just been absolutely amazing. The game one with Pinko going for that psych up onto Will Xerneas in the last ditch attempt in that game and then pulling out the win from there was just incredible to see. I really hope you guys have enjoyed Enjoyed the matches this week it's been really great featuring them all featuring purple and pinko on our last game and then hectic and stew and our second game that we featured today so we featured 10 and 11 this week as they say going into next week we will be featuring 12 13 14 leaving us one more week after that where we will crown our champions so guys thank you so much for tuning in like i said at the start of the episode just a reminder the ultra series signups are now live so if you'd like to go over and check those out and sign up for the ultra series the link is in the description hop over to the patreon and all the information is over there but like i say if you've got any questions leave them in the comment section below but that about wraps it up for this week i hope Hope you have a great evening great weekend and we'll see you again for another episode of flinch review show next week so until then guys take care of yourselves and bye bye